the uh, the glory realm was uh, filled the whole entire creation on the seventh day when Elohim finished creating everything from the um, from the you know the sky, the ground, all of the living animals, the plants, the, you know the trees were made on the on the third day, and then all of the insects, birds, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Everything was all one. Everything was all syn synchronized as one. It was all one full, one whole reality. Um, the glory was filling everything, was holding everything together. There was nothing that um, could oppose God. There was nothing that could not be one with God. There was no, um, you know, free will and consciousness yet. And that's just that's just it. I mean, all, all the other creatures in creation just do God's will. They're just one with God. There's nothing that can can defy that. And and you know everything was perfect paradise in the in the fullness of the glory of God. And that's what it was meant to be for man and woman for the human race it was meant to be that's what it was meant to become and they lived in god placed them in eden you know in the purity of the glory in that bubble of glory walking among the trees you know as i'm doing right now pure pure this pure spiritual um, oneness with god there was no in other words they were just walking among the trees there was no ritual you'll you'll if you read clearly it was just his spirit flowing throughout their their being and in the voice that, that still actually dwelling with them um continually it was there was no concept of churches no no icon to wear no cross no um no special building to go in no special ro clothing to put on it says they were completely naked and unafraid unashamed meaning pure total oneness they were more one with, this was more their church, you know, their their spiritual, the church was the, the trees and the forest all around them. It says that they, they walked among the trees of the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And um, they lived in pure nature, pure glory. Um, from, you know, birth to birth and death was just all one, one full thing in the spiritual um, nature of the universe. And there was no concept of of um, hell or death it's really clear there was no concept of hell at that time there was no concept of this separation from God they were they were already they were already fully one with God and the serpent came in to deceive the serpent it's that knowledge of good and evil that that actual knowledge like it says knowledge puffs up knowledge created this awareness of the uh, this concept of uh, evil of good and evil and this this uh, du dualistic concept that then you know separated them caused them to have the shame caused them to lose that oneness with God and that's when the spirit comes in the cool of the day and that the wind of the spirit you got they can hear God coming in that still small voice and uh, they they were hidden they were shamed they were hiding from God because of this the knowledge of, of good and evil. They couldn't be one with God anymore. They were separate from God. They were, you know, fallen in the fall. They couldn't be, they couldn't be fully one with nature anymore with the whole natural order of the heavens and the earth all being one. So everything above and everything below was all, was all one, it was all that at one. And now they needed rituals. Now they needed to build the altars of fire, you know, like you can, you know, you can even look, see over here a brick altar fire you'll see that in most people's yards now and people use that for um, rituals to, to call Jehovah to get back into the presence of try to get back into the presence of the glory of God to get the spirit back around them and there was this process now there was a separate a separation from Eden and the cherubim were surrounding the uh, the glory of God and so God desires all along to fill the entire creation with the glory of God that it would be purely one as it was in, in the in the in the beginning and that's the that's written throughout the prophets where it says you know the, the glory of god will fill the earth as waters cover the sea so everything will be reconciled with 
fully one with nature and with man so that God can be all in all and everything we create will be will also be pure and good done in done in the nature of God so people can still um, you know advance and make technology and build clothing and make and create things and it says that everything created will be called holy unto the Lord will be labeled holy unto the Lord so everything that we cre we craft and create um, will be pure and won't will no longer pollute mankind or pollute the earth that's the key everything has to be done in accord with in, in union with nature in union with the Spirit of God so that people can then um, develop naturally and, and organically um, in accord with uh, you know the Edenic life so everything has to come out from the spirit and the natural flow of, of, of joy or glee um, peace patience kindness gentleness and self-containment those are the fruits, some of the fruits of the Spirit that guide people and fill people up. And that, that connects all people together. And if those fruits of the Spirit were, were, were actually being um, flowing throughout the whole entire world and the whole population, the, the, the world would be full of the glory of God. There'd be nothing that could go, go wrong. There'd be no war. There'd be no, no murder. There'd be no pollution either. Because, again, God created the, the order comes from the bottom up. He created the everything in the waters, everything on the land, everything in the sky. So everything has to flow together as one. And that's where the new man, the old man polluted that, the old man ruined that connection. Jesus came to restore that connection in Revelation 5 when he sat, he finally sat down at the throne, one as man, one with the Father, one with the Creator. And then all the animals, it says, were surrounding the throne of glory with all in union together, singing praise to Jesus. All the creatures, it says, under the sea, under the land, up in the sky above, in the heavens above, and on the earth. So everything is all synchronized as one in Revelation chapter 5 for the recognition of, um, of man um, coming into that full oneness and alignment with God and, his, and the creative capacity in the intellect, the creative capacity and imagination being one with God, synchronized with nature so that we can create, we can build technology, we can move forward. God's not going to destroy what's been built and what's been made. God's going to use it, lift it up, and move forward. And so, and so that's where the glory of God is going to fill the whole world. Everything is going to be renewed in this pure, um, you know, um, glorious, you know, culture that's going to develop. It talks about it in the, in, in the Bible. It says that in, uh, someone at 100 years old would be considered a youth. Um, people, people will be living during that 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 millennial kingdom for up to a thousand years at a time, and then Hades is completely emptied out. So there is no there is no death anymore. You you would you instantly just transfer into into the heavenly realm, into the glory realm. So it would be truly an amazing world that that God had initially planned. That was the whole entire plan from Genesis chapter uh, two when everything was complete and then this you know this alternate story is introduced where the snake comes in and everything is you know flipped upside down and 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 um you know divided against god and and then god god god's not given up god say god saying i'm going to complete this i'm going to finish this this thing and dust shall be the serpent's food and Everything will be one again. The lion shall lay down with the lamb. Everything is going to be completed, consummated, and reunited with the glory to a glorious world greater than it ever could have been before.